Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're looking at Polyvibe by Blue Cat Audio. It is a phaser plugin. Let's start off with a demo. Now this demo is quite dressed up, but the core effect that makes some of this go is Polyvibe. So we're gonna look at this. We're gonna start with a, a more general example of some saw waves just so we understand what things do. So when I jump to this, uh, you're not completely lost on <laughs> what's happening. So uh, let's go ahead and just give this a quick listen. I really like the sound of the loop as well. It's just super nice. All right, so let's start off here with Polyvibe. It is the core effect that actually opens up this synth line over time, and over here it's just totally open. So let's go over to a just some saw waves are being fed into this Polyvibe. So we can you know easily understand what is going on here. So there are three modes, and whenever you get a phaser like plugin, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it through actual phasing, you can do it through the use of notched filters that are just, you know, moving um, or, you know, they're changing in some way. And that's 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 the two I generally think of. There's this additive way you can do it, too. But that's kind of like a specialty case. So the classic is there are some notch filters moving around. Then you've got the reverse a reverse is uh, it, it, Maybe flipped might be a better word. So it's when instead of notches, you have peaks. And this is how you get like a wah effect. And then finally, you have the last one phase, which is a combination with some actual phasing going on. And, you know, those, those are the flavors. So you have three sort of main flavors to pick from. And then intensity is just how much of this effect is happening. So if we turn it way up versus, you know, nothing. And you can right click to reset things or double click things to type things. So that's what these do. I really like the glowing LFO indication. It looks like a old, you know, plastic gem thing as a kid that you'd be like real excited to have just because it's kind of cool looking. Anyways, besides that, we have a filter shape now. So with the filter you have control over these these different filters that are going on inside the plugin. Uh, you can control their bandwidth, where they are. So this frequency isn't like a frequency is in how fast. It's really more, you can think of it a bit more like a cutoff. It's not really a cutoff because it's defining where the notch is going to be. So it's kind of a cutoff. Not in the same way a low pass or a high pass is though. gives you a bit of an idea of what that does and then the bandwidth if we make them very very narrow it's going to be like the filter's not there at all and then if we open them way up they're going to they're going to cut out huge chunks of the spectrum and you get a mostly cut out spectrum uh, via this way so kind of nice and then we've got separation now this controls how close this is how I think of it it's just how closely related the two filters are so if you have this very low it's going to be like one gigantic filter and if we have this separate they're going to be doing different things to different parts of the spectrum they'll be separately processing things like separated filters so you get a more smooth. So if you're going for tremolo style effects, having this down low is a way you could do that. And then finally for motion, I'm going to set the separation here to zero. And this just controls the direction the filters are moving. So in normal mode, they're going the same way. In opposite mode, they're moving in opposite directions. So this is normal. Here's opposite. If we open up their separation versus normal, that's what you get. 
So if you want a bit more of a smoothed out sound, you generally want your separation up higher and opposite mode will also provide a bit more of that. You want them, the more unified the filters are, the more pronounced this effect is gonna be and the closer it's gonna get to kind of a, a tremolo. Now, of course, I'm speaking from classic mode. You get slightly different flavors of this when you go to the other different modes. Uh, we have depth. This is just, you know, how much the filters can affect it. <laughs> Versus you know, a low depth, it doesn't do anything. Our rate. Now, when I see frequency, this <laughs> I see frequency and I think of rate. Uh, but you got to remember, these, these are the filters. This is the LFO. So this is what's going to cause our phasing for us. To sort of, it, it drives the filters to move around. You go fast. You could, of course, sync this. You've got a swing control that does exactly what you think. It's going to swing the LFO, and you can even see the light, how it's moving now. This can do some cool things when you start dealing with things like very wide bandwidths. Um, it becomes less of a swing effect and almost more of like a tone control in a way. And then finally, we've got stereo. So right now, we've been in mono. If we pump this up, we'll have a stereo difference between the two. You get a really nice wide effect. You can do a whole bunch of neat stuff with that. And then you've got this sync control, which I turned on earlier, which will allow us to sync it to the DAW's tempo. Uh, as you can see, it even changes here. We're at, you know, eighth dotted eighth notes. We could go to like half notes or quarter notes. And then you've got this D phase. Uh, D phase just simply moves it a bit off that grid. Uh, so you, you don't, you sort of have some in-betweens. You don't have to live like directly on this. And if you were to move this around over time, you could get some interesting uh, pitch effects and things as well. I, this is something I haven't experimented with myself, but generally if you've got something with a delay and it sounds like it would be easily automatable, you can get that kind of a thing because that's basically how you get a coarse sort of effect. So that is the basics of what's going on here. What am I doing in, in this track? How am, I, how am I getting these effects? So first let's take a look real quick at the synth here because you need to understand what I'm feeding it. So I've got this really unisoned out, um, you know, wave. It's got verb on it already going in, a bit of compression. That comes in, it hits uh, a version of Polyvibe, and then it comes out through a reverb that's doing its thing. So there's a reverb pre and post, and then Polyvibe's in the middle. Polyvibe starts with a very, very high bandwidth, a very high separation, a low frequency and the rest of it is kind of important the swing was again i discovered it had these sort of unusual tone implications so i just sort of went with it and so i've separated my automation out here so that all the top ones these are all the poly vibe things so you can see i'm going to change the frequencies that are affected over time the uh the bandwidth is going to close so this essentially here uh the effect is going to turn off and then we're going to have the swing effect come on. So this is going to change the rhythm, so to speak. But I go into a more... So over here, I've got like straight chords going, right? These are just straight up chords. And then over here, I've got some arpeggiations happening. So it becomes a little bit more rhythmically complex. So the swing move doesn't carry so much weight as it is a rhythmic thing. And then at the end, I, I fade out the intensity over time. Uh, essentially turning the effect off because at this point, I've reached some new spot. So this is very much... I really liked the way it could just scoop out the spectrum, but do it in this sort of rhythmic way and then have it come back together. Uh, it was just a really appealing thing to me. So let's go ahead actually and just solo these top pieces. So this is just Polyvibe doing its thing. Ah, I should mention here also, I've got a number of automations going on on the input itself. So there is... Uh, the reverb being turned off, um, things with the decay of the reverb. These things are just sort of uh, small afterthoughts, uh, not super, super important for this particular sound. But this this is partially why it sounds so faded out because Polyvibe's scooping the spectrum out and then I'm reverbing it uh, pretty hard. And then I, I fade that reverb out and I bring down the bandwidth over time, making it more narrow so it sounds like it's going away in addition to reducing the in intensity eventually. So uh, that's sort of what's going on here. Uh, but there's also some distortion that's on and being turned on over time, which is why at the beginning it sounded so crunchy right there. Uh, a filter opens up, 
a low pass specifically. So this is going to really get bright at the end. And then I've got some unison, which is going to cause us some uh, some nice juicy uh, chorusing type stuff going on there. Some unison effects. Um, it, it, unison's it, it's just an additive chorus. If you're not familiar with unison, uh, you could do similar effects with Polyvibe itself. But I felt like feeding Polyvibe a already unisoned thing. Uh, so, anyways, I have to turn these on to get a little bit more accurate of a picture. Here we go. off and there's the just the crazy long verb so let me go ahead let's bypass this real quick just to show you what it would be like without polyvibe on there A difference maker so this while the general tone is mostly there this really helps open it up also it adds a lot more uh, sort of an intensity to it since there's that rhythmic pulsing that happens you know it faded away we're going back the frequency begins to rise things get sort of cut there's like a sweep going through there bandwidth is shrinking but we're now able to hear the pulsing that comes specifically from polyvibe Swing comes on. At this point, it's closing off and it begins to fade out. And we're essentially in the new section. So this is when you think of uh, this sort of a plugin, you, know, you tend to think of guitars, especially since it's Blue Cat. Blue Cat, you know, really specializes in guitar effects. This is a guitar pedal here. You can you can treat it like a stomp box. So there's one use for Polyvibe. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.